Okay, guys, then Zav uh, asked me a question about the straight approach. Totally valid the question was, so everyone can learn. Uh, would you mind looking at my straight approach to a napper in the FI from yesterday? It starts around the 57 mark. Thank you, mate. Really, really important to me, so I'll move that up here. 57 mark, that's great. Uh, interesting challenge doing the straight approach without tack and range info or flight path marker in the HUD. I think you mean like a waypoint mark or something in the HUD, that's fine. Because you've got the all the velocity vector, of course, yes, you don't have that, that's valid. Good point. And with quite a lot of traffic around too. In retrospect, I think it was a bit too low in my final approach. Okay, touching down at the very start of the runway, which is a great place to touch down, mate. Because then you've got all that runway ahead of you if you burst a tyre or you need to stop for some reason or the brakes don't work. A lot of people touch down like a third of in the runway. And it's like, why do we bother building that first third of the runway if everyone's going to touch down there? What point is it? No point at all, is it? So you always try and go for the numbers caveat on that if you are a jet a high wing loading high alpha um problems with drag of course like the f5 if it gets slow then of course we have problems then and you are heavy bringing back stores you might want to land a little bit in only a little bit you know try and land on the numbers because uh you yeah, know you wouldn't take off from a third down the runway would you there's no point doing that so why would you land a third of the way down the runway okay so we try and land on the numbers if we can i'm looking for any tips you might have on judging the correct heights for an approach when no range info is available also feel free to comment on anything else i will comment zavmeister i will comment let's have a look there mate so let's go and find you up here then and of course this does happen if you send all the jets at the same time which is why if you are landing away aircraft like this you normally go as three ships today you know we can do whatever we want but normally it goes three ships because that makes it a lot easier there's zav okay let's tie zav to that and let's put something on the airfield i put that down just so i can get some range information zav's then coming in from 22 miles and he's at an altitude of 6500 feet that's a very sensible thing to do because as i said in the beginning um it's very important then to keep a bit of height so that you can actually see the field obviously there are visual features here you've got the water there looking long you can see the water out here and you can see this bit of water here this bit of water actually is not a bad place to line yourself up and i would be using a lot of maps here to to kind of go oh how far is that how, how far you know what i mean so i know that would be mm, if i cross this river and i get this water way here what range is that and we can see that if we play this a little bit more just by looking at you know we do this on the maps before we actually went to an upper 12 miles for gopher so we know that that lake is there that kind of lines us up with the field for a straight approach and gopher right there should be taking his checks 12 miles gear travels all right that's what gopher should be doing now zav's going to try and put himself over here hopefully where does that go is it amongst this and there he is so again, Zav's coming in now 4,000 feet, so a bit high, but Gopher's high. So again, let's squirrel that way then. Let's get ourselves down to something reasonable at 4,000 feet. And if you haven't seen the field yet, by all means, come in at 4,000, but ideally straight and approach this phone from 2,000. The problem you're having, of course, as you said, is you don't have the range information. You don't have the velocity vector in the HUD. Not that that's that important because, of course, pilots, you know, we do pilot stuff. That's why we teach things such as the range pattern and the circuit so critically to the numbers so that when you don't have the numbers, you can still fly the profile because you've seen what it looks like when you've been delivering that um, that level, when you've been delivering the, um, uh, the the correct numbers, the correct speed. It's built into your brain. So we're coming in here. So we know we're going through 12 miles now for Zav. Uh, he's still getting the height off, which is great. And again, that's the 12 mile point there. Yeah, 12 miles up top here for Zav. So you're looking really nicely, actually. Remember what we said about 15 miles, those 300 knots roughly at 15 miles. Let the speed come back. So as you go through 12 miles, we can travel the gear. To do that, in the F5, we need to be below 260 knots, all right, for the gear and the flap limiting speed. F18 is 250 knots. Okay, and that is to the knot. If you put the gear down at 261, that's a failed sortie for any student, all right? So students normally give it a bit of a buffer, about five knots. And so 2,000 feet, really nicely done at uh, coming through 10 miles, nicely done. Speed now, we just want to get that gear down uh, if we can. I won't know whether you've got gear now, I've got a shoe, puts it down in the correct place. And we'll just go through a couple of two times, five times. Let's go through three times. So people recovering don't ignore them so 2,000 feet try and hold that yeah gear will travel there brilliant looks really nice seven miles now what i'll be doing here zab monster is i'll be looking then for that runway to appear five well, about three degrees nose down in the head-up display however comma you don't have a velocity vector f18 by all means let that runway come in so keep going forward until the runway descends it's called depressing until the runway depresses down to about three degrees on say a hornet hud then you could put the thing on the thing the velocity vector on the runway it's three degrees and we just drive it in get back on speed land everyone's on a three degree approach it's nice today you've got to kind of eyeball that a little bit and you've got a secondary exaggerated problem of the fact that your speed will be reducing down the final approach unlike hornet 
Hornet flies a, 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 an 8.1 alpha approach the whole way down, nicely on speed. Sometimes they stick at 150 and then they end up go, you know, losing a few knots. There's nothing significant all the way down. F5 land, though, we start at 210 knots, don't we, at the top of drop here at 7 miles, uh, around about 2,000 feet. And then, of course, we come back from that 210 onto our approach speed, which is the approach alpha, which tends to be with the fuel weight you've got on now, which is about 2.2, I think it is, 2.3 on fuel. That's going to be something along the lines of... 160 something knots so good 50 knots to lose and what's that's going to happen it's 15 alpha in the f5 and so you've got about six alpha on that nose is going to continually come up as you go down so it's going to make things look a bit different for you so you've really got to think to yourself where's my body going to impact the runway if i keep this on oh a bit short a bit of power then all right go a bit longer well that's a bit bit long now i'll take a bit of power off put the nose down a little bit oh, that's the right place and you do that by eyeballing it the whole, whole way in okay because you don't have any other references so nicely in the descent now Again now, 1,300 feet as you're approaching 1,200 feet, or 15 should be at 5 miles. You can see you're at 7.8. So again, this is where you're going to start getting yourself into trouble and shallowing. We are high speed. We never stabilize at 210, but don't worry about that. You did get gear flaps and everything else, so we're okay. If you do feel I'm going short, as I said before, a bit of power, just get that nose up, get the VV, sort of the velocity vector, not the velocity vector, the VSI, vertical speed indicator, around about zero, and drive yourself in close to the runway. As it comes beneath the nose, we can then put the nose down again, bring a power back, and we're trending back towards that approach speed and that approach alpha. And as you can see, for the approach speed and profile, approach alpha, you've got quite a long way to go, so don't worry about that, all right? It's so coming in again, you put the nose down there, and you can see from here, because we're using tack blue, that your velocity vector is well below the runway, so you will land short. This is tack view. You don't have that in F5 land, all right? So don't worry about that at all. Um, if I was to show you an F18 on approach, that velocity vector would be on the runway the whole way in. So we know we're going short, so you should bring that up a little bit. And I think what's going to happen here, what most students sometimes do, is they end up going down and they drive in a long way, but they're quite, sh they're quite low, they're quite slow, and that's a bad place to be. So I'd always say just kind of keep that... Um, that approach a bit higher if you possibly can if in doubt and then you can just ease it off in the later stage as long as you don't exacerbate um, a higher rate of descent in the final stages all right so again i can see what you're doing now so yeah 800 feet you should be at what um so nine three miles and of course you're at six so you're twice the range so in effect you're on a one and a half degree glide path not three so you can see that's about one and a half there so drive it in stay at the height you're at drive it in until you reach three miles and again you're just doing this by eye Keep driving, and you, you can see what you're doing. You are driving in. Look, you're driving in. You're going. Oh, it feels low. So I'm going to drive in until it looks reasonable. It's looking reasonable about now, isn't it? But look, you're over the gear limiting speed now. So that's a failed sortie straight away because we failed to appreciate um, what putting power on does to our speed. You've got gear and flaps down, and now you're at 270 knots. Gear limiting speed 260. It would be an instant fail as a sortie for any student. In fact, a staff mate would take control before that happens. They say as he approaches, if he's supposed to be at 210 knots and he's down the slope, so he's bled so much speed off. If he comes back over that 210 knots, an instructor probably give a warning and then if they go up around about 250 10 knots above uh, below the gear limiting speed the instructor say i have control mate bring the nose up just to stop that bring the power back and um, reset it and go you have control mate watch your speed but it would be a failed sortie because the student wouldn't have caught the fact they're about to overstress an airplane all right flying training is brutal you know don't worry about it it's good i'll just try and bring those lessons in here for you mate you know what i mean because so anyway, now, so we, we've sacked off the speed. That's a really bad thing now because another thing about having a high speed as we come in, of course, is that we could blow our tires. You may be over tire limiting speed. Tire limiting speed is normally about 170, 180 knots in these kind of aircraft. There's no point having tires that are going to survive a 260 knot approach because we're never going to do one, are we? Ever. Because the gear limiting speed is 260 knots. So why would we ever be landing at 260 knots? Um, so we're always going to be landing below 200 knots. The Tornado had a 195 approach speed, I think. Uh, wrong. Had a 220 tire limiting speed. And the reason we did is because if we came in on a swept wing approach for an emergency, the speed for that at the end stage was about 217 knots. So that meant we had a, a buffer before we blow our tyres. So anyway, you've got to get back on speed for this now. And it's not going to be easy because your alpha's come off. You've got to get alpha back on. So that's nice. That's a good approach now. Looking much better in the later stages there, isn't it? So we can see three miles, about 900 feet. So you, you've saved it there with the expense, of course, of overstressing your gear. But that's all right. Now we come back on speed. So hold it on there. That's really nicely driven in there. But you've got to get that speed off. And now the problem you've got in F5 land as well because of the wing because of the alpha problems and everything else we have to limit ourselves below 300 feet to about 70 percent the hawk was exactly the same 
no less than 70% in the finals turn. And of course, with the F5, you would have that kind of figure. So now you're probably at idle, trying to get the speed off there. It's all a mess. It's low, you're slow. It wasn't a consistent approach. And that's the problem of, of having uh, an, an approach that wasn't stable from the outset, which is why we use the figures of 15, 12, 7 for the approach, mate. All right, just letting you know there. All right, so now we're driving in, trying to get back to our alpha there, which is going to be, as we know, around about 1. 60 something isn't it i think i can't remember what the exact fuel figure is but you've got the alpha to be on and we're, we're fast at this approach now so and uh some jets don't allow you to touch the brakes until a certain speeds reach either so you could be over that but that's looking much better now try and flare it on you are a bit hot here unfortunately and yeah you are right at the edge of that runway so you want to hold it off a little bit just flare it over get the numbers all right but yeah okay 167 and i think if we look at that approach alpha then it looked very reasonable in the end stage there so driving it in looking long where am i going to impact where am i going to impact bit of power if i need to think of impact short and you can see the alpha looked much better in the end stage there with a much more respectable approach speed at the last minute that should be done the whole way down but that's the problem of course that we do have when we don't have any um any tack and approach speeds uh, uh, ranges or anything like that to go on so we have to eyeball it and the way we eyeball it then as i said is by getting the big map up here zooming out a little bit and then just going right what is i mean that runway is about two miles long it's ten thousand foot runway so we can go right that's two thousand foot there that's that's two miles sorry there so that's about what well, that's two miles from the threshold four six eight uh, about 10 we said that was about 12 here didn't we so we know 12 if that's 12 that's probably 15 if we were to bring an aircraft back to that kind of range there so what's range is par driver yeah he's 20 miles at that at level with that one there so between that and that is going to be 15 miles Fonzie's probably at 15 there you go Fonzie's at 15 so Fonzie's at great he's 8,000 feet so he's, he's if he's on a straight and approach again he's at the wrong wrong heights okay so again uh, you'd want to be there and then you want to set yourself up not easy to do straight approaches guys when you don't have any ground features or oh, sorry when you haven't got any miles from a tacan or a waypoint which is why we tend to use ground features and beforehand because we knew that we could have a tacan uh, straight in approach here what i would have done is probably draw my own little map out here with a straight line and gone well that's 18 miles that's at 12 just so i've got an idea when that town is so i'm flying over and go yeah it's a good time to take my checks now you know what i mean because we haven't got a tacan at a napper at all again the other thing i said last night on the sortie was 15 mile track call ask them can i have a 15 mile track call please normally done for instrument approaches but it's a civilian airfield at a napper i'm sure they'll be happy with that to give you a 15 mile track call and then you know i'm a, I'm a 15 miles i'm at 300 knots at 2000 feet now air brake travels looking to get below 260 which set 80 percent so the reduction is not too rapid gear travels and then i can look at um flaps travel hold 210 for the f5 and then well 195 plus fuel we use 210 in the school and then we can go down the slope there obviously looking to build out for the whole way down hope that's helped guys quick little um thing for you now and uh, obviously tonight we're doing the nttr um which is another statical training range of course as we start the extremists again which is cool it's extremists uh, for the guys that just gone through the primo i'll talk you through all that it's a bit of a familiar sortie we we'll get some jets air more tonight and uh yeah great stuff again as i said send me the tapes here i'll do a, a quick review for you i'm more than happy to do it. it takes me no time at all thanks guys appreciate it